Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is part two of the five item video swap with the incredible Tracy Fox. And this is going to be kind of a hot mess video simply for a variety of reasons. But because I'm me and I went off and did this while I was creating the videos and going into the project. Yep, that's a squirrel. And I've had lots of questions recently about squirrel and how I use it. Squirrel is a noun. This is a physical squirrel. I mean, I know obviously, duh, Corey, but the way I use it. Squirrel is a noun, it's an actual critter, and squirrel is a verb. And it's what happens when my mind goes off on a tangent, kind of like a squirrel when he sees something, he's heading in one direction, and then he sees something and he heads in a completely different direction. Well, I do the same thing. And my word this year is squirrel because I want to be more intentional. Like I want to allow the squirrel to happen because that's when some really fun creativity takes place. But I also want to be aware of the squirrel so that I can rein myself in a bit and focus when I need to focus, like finishing unfinished projects. So this was an absolute squirrel video, excuse me, a project, but it was a whole lot of fun. Um, it's been a while since I started this because life and such some things happened and I've had to pause and then come back to it. And it's actually been really cool because I started off with the concept that Carrie the Crafter and Gail shared where you get five things and you create something with those five things. And, and, and I was a, a good little sport and I started down that path. And then I thought, well, Carrie's not the boss of me. Sorry, Carrie. And these were a guideline and you know, it's not like it's a harm, hard, firm, fast law. It's kind of just a general guideline. So I went off on my tangent and I, instead of just creating an album, which I had started to do and intended to do, I kind of tied it in with some of the questions that I'd received on my videos and through messenger and through email about covers and how a lot of people struggle with making a cover. So if you're an old hat at junk journaling, it's just one of many steps in creating the junk journal. And sometimes people say that that's a really hard thing for them to create. We're going to put floof. My friend Gay made me floof and I adore him. We're going to put him kind of like, he's going to oversee this, this whole thing. We're going to, we're going to put him out there. Okay. There you go. There's floof off in the distance. Anyway, so that a covers can be a challenge. People that have done this for a long time can still find the covers challenging. And people who are new, you've got so many pieces and elements to combine that um, sometimes it's overwhelming and people that want to do this and want to get started hesitate because of all the components. So they might take them a long time to get started. So it got me thinking about covers and that got me thinking about, well, what is a junk journal? And, and what does that really mean? in as far as you know how we use them and such and so that's kind of the tangent I went on all right covers um gosh I'm not even 100% sure where I start I guess I'll start here so five items that Tracy sent to me and you hopefully seen the previous video I'm going to load it just before I load this one though I did that eons ago of the items that Tracy sent me and I, I wrote them down because I knew I wouldn't remember what was where and then the item I sent to her, and I sent her a napkin simply because, um, I don't know if Tracy said it, I haven't allowed myself to watch Tracy's videos. I know they're out, but I haven't allowed myself to watch them yet simply because I wanted to finish mine before I can do that. So tonight I'm going to watch Tracy's videos and I can't wait. But one of the things that I have loved and I found with um, Kara when I did it with her is the challenge, the idea that it's making me think outside of the box. It's making me think, step outside of my comfort zone and try things that I might not otherwise consider or try. And that has been a whole lot of fun. So I'm going to put in a plug. If you've got a crafty friend and you're considering this, go for it, do it. It is probably one of the most beneficial things that I've done in a long time to help me really think about what I'm doing and being intentional with what I do and trying new things. Okay. So I sent one of the things I sent um, Tracy was a napkin because I have a, a slew of them and I don't use them very often. Sure, I like them, but I don't use them very often. So I'm going to start with the napkins and there's a whole bunch of things with napkins. And part of the reason I did that is one, because I sent it to her and two, because napkins make a quick, easy, fun cover for whatever your junk journal is. And, and the, here's where I'm going with that. All right. 
I've shared them before in videos, but these are composition books that I used for idea books back in the day. These are probably, I don't know, a gazillion years old, 15, 20 years old, something like that. I mean, these are so big that I can't even put them in here. They're just a standard composition book, but they're covered with napkins. And I have an old video, one of my first videos that talks about how I put it, the mat napkin on without getting any bubbles, making it perfectly flat and perfectly smooth. So, and I used Mod Podge with these. And one of the disadvantages with Mod Podge is that when it gets warm, it can get sticky. Even though like I touch it right now, it's cold in my cave, it's not sticky. But when it's warm, it, these tend to get sticky. So that's just, but they're smooth, they're flat. It's a great resource for napkins. You can see these, these guys are chunky, a regular, and I brought this over to compare it. This is the same exact regular composition book, right? Spine is, I don't know, maybe, or the pages are about a quarter of an inch. Well, these guys with the stuff in them have expanded to two, three inches easy, and they still lay flat. So if you're just wanting to get started and you don't want to make a big commitment or, you know, I'm not sure what kind of pages to include and how to include and whatever, this is a fabulous way to get started because you can still write in these. They're composition books. You, They've got paper, they've got pages, you can add stuff to them. So it might be a good place to start. But if you are going to start there, some things to consider. Now, oh, I put them over here and I forgot to pull them back out. Sorry about that. Um, I went to Walmart simply because most of us have Walmart or something similar to a Walmart. And I got a couple different, like here's just a little notepad. I don't know, this is maybe five by seven or something. Here's a little maybe four-ish by six, and I'm guessing on the size notebook. Now, notice this has a plastic cover. And then there's these flip up kind and open to the side kind. These have paper covers. So when you are choosing whatever it is you want to cover, like I'm going to toss some of these, like the one I made over here. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to toss those in my purse just to have, because there's no reason that your whatever you throw in your purse can't be pretty too and, and utilize your supplies. Okay, so paper covered with gesso, paper covered with black gesso, paper uncovered, plastic, plastic, this is important. And then no cover, right? So you can get these anywhere. Plastic, if you are going to choose the plastic route, you can use it. But you see here, I put some gesso on and I covered it with my napkin. And what happens? Well, you can see down here, it peels, it peels up really easy. And I even quote unquote treated the plastic cover first. Well, who wants to do all the work and then and then be stuck with something that doesn't work? That doesn't mean you can't use plastic. You just have to be a little more intentional and on how you're using the plastic. And I've got two samples. I'll try to remember to, to show you they're in different piles, but two samples where I use plastic and it doesn't peel away because I didn't use it with gesso, okay? That's another note. See, all that hard, well, it wasn't really all that hard. That's kind of a fib, but all that work wasted because it peels right up. But one of the things about the napkin technique, whether you use what I did in the other video to show you how to get it perfectly smooth, or you just use Distress Collage Medium or Mod Podge or whatever, one of the things that I have found most helpful, and I'm gonna share that here just because it's good timing wise. So you've put your layer down, you put your napkin on, you've put your sealant layer on, regardless of what substrate you're using. When the top is dry, you can cut it with scissors, but by far the easiest way to remove this, I'm sorry if you have a sensitivity to sound, this is annoying. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard, but it'll be just a second. This is just an emery board. You can use sandpaper, you can use anything like that. The best way to get a smooth, easy edge, a good, clean edge with removing your napkin is by using a sanding tool, a sanding block, an emery board file, whether you're going around corners, whatever you're doing, this just gives you a nice, easy, clean edge. Whereas scissors, you may or may not get a close cut. So that's just a tip. Be mindful of your substrate and to get your napkin off, an emery board is a, a cool tool. Now, while I've got these over here, I am gonna show you, like I said, black gesso, white gesso. Gesso works great on paper. If you've got words and such underneath that you don't want to show, like um, 
because napkin, once you've put it on, is really, really thin. So I'd put the gesso on and then maybe I'd put some music paper or, or um, dictionary page or something along those lines. And then I'd put my napkin on. And then none of these words are going to show underneath. Okay. That brings me to another point. And I moved it so that I wouldn't forget it. One, oh, here we go. One of the things. Be mindful. This is this really, really pretty fox napkin. I was going to send a, a little thing to Tracy Fox because Tracy Fox, right? But I put it on top of black gesso and you lose all those cool images. The dark gesso really shines through. Now it's still kind of a cool image, but you don't get that the same visual impact with the foxes. So be careful when you're setting yourself up that you're mindful of what's underneath because napkin is so thin that it will show through. Okay, keeping that in mind. Um, I'll keep going. Okay, so here is one. This is just one of those cheap little, I think they're like a quarter, flip books. Well, I can throw this in my purse just to have a notepad for when I'm out and about and I want to take notes, right? So I put the gesso on it because this is paper. And then I covered it with a napkin. And then I sealed it. And then I put a little washi at the top to um, glue down some washi to separate it. And this one is mostly smooth. And now I tend to always go with smooth, the smooth option, but it's really good to mix it up sometimes to keep things interesting and to remind you that you have options. So I did this one just a little bit differently in that regard. Okay, something else I learned. So this one is a combination of napkin and me playing a little bit and things from bag number five. And I'm going to reverse order or kind of, I'm going to kind of jump around because I can. Okay, so I used the Your Creative Studio packaging and I put the napkin right on top of it. Well, you can see because it's so thin, you can see right through it. Even though it's a cool element, you have to remember that anything that's on your background is going to shine through your napkin. And on this one, I used Distress Collage Medium. Now Mod Podge is a great choice and some people prefer it. I actually really much prefer the Distress Collage Medium for a couple reasons. One, it, um, now there's, couple different kinds I've got here. I've got regular matte, I don't like glossy anything. Well, okay, except for glossy accents and Nouveau, but that's intentional glossy. And then there's a crazing kind, and I'll show you the difference in just a sec. So just be aware that there's different purposes and different functions. This comes in a gloss, I also, I believe, it comes in different colors. This crazing gives you um, a more wrinkly effect and it allows any distress ink or coloring to stand out a little bit more. They both do the same thing. They're both a glue, but you're going to get a different effect. And the thing I like most about this more than anything else is it doesn't stick. Once it's dry, it's dry. It's not sticky. So if I've got two things next to each other, they don't stick next to each other where that can happen with Mod Podge. So just be aware. Okay. So I was putting it down and I thought, you know what? And from my mistakes, but I like that it's, I mean, it really is matte. It is a very matte surface, which is kind of cool. And as I was playing with this, so here is the napkin I started with. Here is the way it looked. Now see, look at the difference in the color. And that is because I just added a little distress ink. After I put the gesso on, I just put a little light coat of distress ink with my blending brush. And then I put this on top. Totally different effect. And I like it but that's just me. So I was playing with this and I was mad at myself. And then I thought, well, you know what? I really love my Seth after vintage beeswax and I'll grab that. I probably should have grabbed it. Uh, it's just behind me. It is an embossing powder and it is phenomenal stuff. And I use it a lot. Seth after vintage beeswax embossing powder, and it says baked texture. So I thought, you know, I always finish my pieces with distressed collage medium or Mod Podge or what have you. Well, why why can't I use embossing powder on it? So I did and absolutely love the texture, the effect, the finish. It's still fluid. It still moves, but it gives it a really cool look. So that is what I did with this. In my bag five, if you watched the previous video, Tracy gave me a bird book, some tea bag paper, awesome stuff a variety of envelopes and index card tabs. So what I did was I took the index card tabs with my initial and cut them to size. I used the napkin like I sent Tracy and I just took one of those little books and I covered it. I made a cover for it. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my washi in there to, to 
but that's okay. Not a big deal. I'll put the washi in any, another time. But I just took one of those really inexpensive paper books. I added the index tabs for the cover covers, and then I sewed in the pages. Glue, actually, I didn't even sew them. I glued them in. I glued them in down here at the end. And then I put a piece of lace at the end, little holes to tie it. And so this is going to go into my purse my initials so I know it's mine if I drop it down or put it somewhere. I've got it right here. So I use the index tabs to create a cover. And this essentially is a junk journal. I can add things, I can put pockets, I can, I didn't on this one, but I, I can do any of those things. So it's a quick, easy, non-committal way to use the supplies that you love and make a junk journal. Okay. Here is the one I was going to show you. Um, here are some of the materials that Tracy gave me in bag five, and I'll go over those in just a sec. But here are some of the envelopes with a napkin, right? And then you can make just about anything into a cover or an element for a cover. So everything I focused on is either a cover or a closure for a cover or an element of a cover. Everything has to do with outside of your journal. So you can focus on that when you're just starting and just put regular paper inside and then add things as you feel more comfortable. So, napkin. This side has regular distressed collage medium. Now, I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. This is just a regular, these are just regular envelopes. I put distressed collage medium on it and then I put the napkin on top. I didn't have great luck when I used the crazing one as the base glue. Um, they, I found they tore more easily and it was harder to move the napkin around to get it where I wanted. I don't know, maybe that's just me, maybe it's this bottle. I liked this crazing for the top, but not for the base layer. I much preferred this for the base layer. They're essentially the same thing, but they're a little different. And I found this worked much better for the base layer. So I threw one of them away because it just, it didn't come out well. So this is me being intentional about wrinkles. I didn't smooth it out too much. I just embraced the wrinkly and, and it's kind of cool. I actually really do like it, especially with the sunflower and such. So this is the front and then on the back, I use the crazing. Now, maybe on camera you can't see it as much, but it gives it a more wrinkly effect and it draws attention to the distressed areas. So this is the exact same napkin. This is regular distressed collage medium matte and this is distressed collage, collage medium crazing. So just be aware that you get a little bit different effect when you use different materials. And you can see, here is, I pulled it over on purpose just so you could see what I was talking about. Here is the napkin, right? And then here it is on top of a craft paper bag. So a little bit different look, a little bit deeper, darker look. All right. And then as I was going along, I was thinking, okay, I started a journal and these are the pages in the bird book that she gave me and they're so cool and I have so many more ideas. You can see I've, I'd started the second journal and I layered these index cards to stack them like the whole, um, oh, you know, waterfall kind of effect for inside and I was playing with these and then I coffee dyed this tea bag paper to use as a liner and this is going to be a cool cover or a base to build on top of a cover or a liner on the inside and then I had two of these phenomenal envelopes and I thought ah oh, that makes a great page insert but that was back when I was on I'm going to make a journal okay and then I moved on to covers and so I thought well how can I use this really cool envelope as a cover and what I did was I'll move these to the side I took that same envelope, instead of folding it in half, I made myself a quarter inch seam. And I just took some, uh, oh, what is this paper? Mixed media paper that I had and sewed it inside, right? So I folded this, made myself a quarter inch spine and inked it a little bit, used a stencil. And I have a cover out of that envelope. I've got a mini journal, like I've got a really, a pocket right here. Um, I could cut the top or the back right here and make another pocket because this is an envelope. Super quick, super easy. And where I sewed it in, because I like to use my sewing machine, I just glued a little bit of lace to hide those stitches. This 15 minutes tops and I've got a fun little journal. Now, could I come in later and add mixed or uh, add elements and flips and flaps and folds? If you've watched any of my videos, you know I love interactive pieces. But they don't all have to start that way and you don't, all of your journals don't have to have that. 
Sure, you can. You can add them as you go. I left myself room because I know I'm going to get chunky. But you can start simple and add things later. So that is that envelope turned into a mini album. Then on the um, video I made with Kara, and all of us have seen these, these are the accordion ephemera holders, right? So I used my napkin, I used just some file folder, and these are some of the envelopes Tracy gave me. Tracy showed me how you can use these envelopes to make stellar pockets for an accordion folder, right? And there's another video that shows that. But basically you just take the envelopes, you fold them in half, and you glue them together. And that way you don't have to um, do as many folds. So I thought, oh, okay, I can make an accordion folder. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. Why can't, oh, and this is um, some of the, sorry, from bag two. So I used my napkin to cover the file folder. I used the envelopes Tracy gave me, and I thought, well, why couldn't this be a journal? Why does this have to be an accordion file folder? Why can't this be a journal? And it can. And so it is. This is, a, this is an actual journal now. So what I'll do is put this, oh, maybe I'll put this through. Put this through for my closure, right? Tie it in a bow, okay? It looks like a journal and then I open it up and I can put individual pieces like let's say there's six pockets in this one I can do seven eight I can do so I could have this as my journal and then and then inside each of these pockets I could just do like a little fold over journal right I could just tuck oh, these don't fit so great well, let's go with these index card I could sew this together and tuck it in there and I could have one per day or one per week or however I wanted to do it because you've got a lot of room and you can make this thing really fat. So you can turn your ephemera file into a journal. This one I used, it's got this really cool texture. I did the same thing I used, glued it on with or put it on with a collage medium and then I did the Seth After Vintage Beeswax for the cover and it's just kind of a fun technique and it also makes it really sturdy. So, you know, to keep in mind. Then I was thinking, okay, so I've got those plastic ones and plastic covers. You can turn just about anything into an album and a cover. This is one of those cheap dollar store photo albums. And I've just put pages into it and I covered it with fabric. This was a, a piece of quilt that my mom had made that gotten ruined. I think one of the, my grand dogs chewed a hole in it. But I was able to repurpose it. And again, that comes down to cover and how to use it. Tracy sent me a button and this button was in that bag. Here is another one. Uh, one of these inexpensive, I'm 97 cents maybe. So I put a page in here so you can make flip ups and interactive and you can take any of the pieces and I'll show you some of them later on and turn that into a cover. You can change the closure you want. Super simple, super quick, and it's still a journal. So you know, keep that in mind. Okay, I think that's mostly what I've done with the napkin. And then I'll go on. So bird book, tea bag paper, envelopes, index card tabs. I showed you how I've turned those into some covers. Bag four was way too much fun. It was this random bits box that she gave me. And um, among those random things, I didn't turn these into a cover, but the chicken totally made me smile. And then I, there was a lamb in there and I had gotten some of that foundry wax from Tim Holtz that he had recently released. And so I was foundry waxing it and then I was distress cranning it. And when I distress, distress cranned it, I broke his leg. So now I have a leg of lamb. Ah, made me laugh. Okay, so those. I, I could put those on a journal. I probably wouldn't, but I could. All the little bits in here I used in various ways to m make elements or journal covers for journals. So she had included a couple dominoes. I used, well, not this bit, but um, I used my drill and a fine bit. And I put this in a clamp and I drilled a hole on top of the domino. And I put these closed eye pins in there, glued them in there with some super glue. And I can hang these from my journal. Um, I used a fine tip drill bit and I think could be wrong, but I think it is Jessica Rapp from Two Silver Oranges that did a video on this, I don't know, two, three, four years ago, a while ago. And um, you can use game pieces to just drill a hole. It's pretty simple to do. I think she uses a Dremel if I'm not mistaken, but um, you can use a regular drill too. Very easy. Hold it in a clamp, 
get a fine bit, drill a hole, put a drop of um, super glue in there. I happen to like the Gorilla super glue and then screw in one of these closed eyes. And then you can pretty much use your jump rings or string or whatever you want and dangle these from a cover. So that that is an option. That is an idea for you. She had sent me this really cool skirt pin and these bells. And so I just put these bells on some jump rings and this fabric is going to make one of my Scotland journals or Scottish journals when I know exactly what size. So I've got it to the side and, and I've got I've got a really cool closure right there. You know, so I've got a closure for my journal just just out of the little bits she put in that box. Another another domino, what I did, that's where I used the larger drill, a little bit larger drill bit. I drilled two holes in the top of the domino and then I've got this cording. I didn't even take it out. Here we go. Cording. And then you can make an elastic closure. So I would put this through, right? Through those holes that I drilled, tie it to the size that I needed, and then I can use this as my closure to put on and off my journal. So that is an option with those random bits. Another piece. Oh, I do, did want to mention. So when I drilled that hole, it was kind of uneven. And because it's those dominoes are either a ceramic or not a ceramic, um, a hard plastic or a wood core. And so this is just a jeweler's beading kit, a bead kit, uh, five, six bucks. It was really inexpensive and it has a graduated side. So if you need to make a hole a little bit bigger in a bead, you put this down and you sand it. Well, this worked really great for those things too, to sand the game pieces and such that I used for the cover bits. They've got different sizes. Um, I think there were five, all five of these came together and I'm 99% sure I got it on Amazon and it was just a few bucks so that you can only, you can make your bead holes bigger, but you can also use it to sand around things. So there's that, I put that aside there. Um, another thing. Okay. So she gave me this really awesome butterfly pin or butterfly piece just to, well, you can put it on as a decoration, of course, but you can also just layer it like I did here with the, the button and with the butterfly pin and, you know, make an embellishment out of this. So instead of just putting the button directly on this, if I were to make this a mini journal, I would put it on my fabric cluster or my lace scrap cluster. And I left even the needle on here so that I could sew it on when I'm ready to. And I've got a closure, but I've got a little bit more interest around the closure. And for a small journal, what a, what a pretty cover that would be. I've got my kilt fabric. I've got some scraps of lace. I've got a pretty button. And then I can either tie or use an elastic or what have you to make a closure. So those, an embellishment and or a closure right there. All right, so that was bag four. Oh, and I'm going to save these because these are the little bits left over from bag two. Bag three was paper clips, tower brads, which were new to me and seriously cool, clothespins and bulldog clips. All right, and so I'll show you how I made those into a cover. Corey, are you crazy? Well, maybe, but, um, but they worked, okay? So I took stain and stained this and I took white paint and I painted this to make it kind of shabby chicy and then I used that new Tim Holtz um, foundry wax to cover this gold clothespin and I used some of the sari silk that was in bag two and what a fun closure that is for the right journal obviously I wouldn't use it for every one of them because it's kind of big and bulky but I just sewed two loops obviously knowing quote unquote the size journal that I need and you just put it on the cover just like that. And I can use any of these pieces. So that was clothespins. That's how I utilize those clothespins. Bulldog clips. In bag one, I might have squealed. I did, I squealed. She gave me two book, a front and a back of book. And what I did was I cut, I cut the, I used my table saw. Or no, I didn't. I used my router. Um, I swing, no. Try it again, Corey. Swing arm compound miter saw to cut just a simple straight line. And so I was able to take these two covers and make them into four pieces so that I could make two little books because, you know, I like many books. Anyway, cut it in half and to make a journal out of these because, again, I like many journals, but I still think this is like a, a four by six or something. So it's a legitimate size. And these bulldog clips. So when, when I'm done, when I'm ready to finish, I'll put an eyelet through here and then some string, and then I'll tie it to the bulldog clip. And all I have to do is 
take this on and off. Bulldog clips are just super handy to use for a variety of things. So that was how I used the bulldog clips. Um, the clothes pins. Paper clips. Okay, you might think I'm crazy and maybe I am, but I absolutely love this one. This is one of those cheap, cheap little books. I think there was two for a dollar or something. And I took a piece of black cardstock and I, I put the layer of the collage medium down and then I just laid on the paper clips and I let them dry. And when they were completely dry, I sewed over the paper clips. Now granted, I went really slow, but my machine had no problem. Not once did I get it caught. And I just sewed those paper clips on. They're really cool, um, let's see, really cool old vintage paper clips with a kind of a different sheen. And I wanted to utilize those. And sure, I can use regular paper clip stuff with it, but I thought, what a fun way to just make a little mini book with no cost. And just used a piece of string and a larger brad for my closure. And I could toss that in my purse. So that was a whole heck of a lot of fun to make. The thing that took the longest was, you know, and you can see I did it randomly and they move, but they're sewn in place. So it's okay that they move because they're, they're not coming out. They're, they're, they're sewn on. So kind of fun on that. Uh, and then this was probably, these things were so much fun. Now the idea is you're supposed to be able to stack these and I couldn't figure out what I would do to stack them. And I did originally put a piece of ribbon through there and that looked really pretty, but um, I didn't necessarily want these flowery edges to show, though you certainly could. You could use a smaller size punch and have those, those flowery edges to go. You could use these as a closure, easy, easy, simple closure. And I'd probably use several of these that way. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to showcase these as a cover. So here we go back to that plastic book, that nasty plastic book. You know, the one that peeled away, right? Well, this is the same book. And what I did for this was, oh, I just got myself a knot. Nicely done, Cor. Oh, I really got it in a knot. Okay, I won't open it. But what I did was I took two pieces of heavy cardstock and I cut them to size, the size that I wanted, right, for the cover. And I drew myself a pencil grid and I poked holes, all right? Just poked holes all the way along. And I think I've got one done in here. I just covered it up. I think I do. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay. And I poked holes and then I put these empty brads inside those holes. And then I used a half inch hole punch and I punched scrap paper. I loved using scraps. Punched scrap paper and a little bit of hot melt glue and glued it on top. So I already put them in, folded them down in this paper that I was going to put on the cover. And I cut, put the brads in each of these holes. And then I put my paper on top. And then I covered my paper with, oh, what did I use? I used glossy accents because I had been wanting to try glossy accents versus, you know, the Nouveau glaze that I normally use, but I'd want, been wanting to try glossy accents to give to see what the difference is. And they're fairly flat. It's got a nice little shine and super cheap plastic composition book made into a cover. So I did that. I sewed on. I sewed that. That was the key. This sews easily. I put the outside cover on. I did. I poked the brads through the holes first so that they wouldn't show, right? used heavy cardstock, poked the brads through where I'd pre-poked all the holes. Then I used a little bit of the collage medium just time to hold it in place, let it dry. And then I covered, well, if I can get the knot out, oh, here we go. I just grabbed the wrong spot. Um, I covered the inside with more heavy cardstock and then I sewed the whole thing in place and it sewed really, really easy. When I was done, I put a pocket on it and I used a little hole to make my tie. And there's there's my juncture. I mean, this is thick and sturdy. I've got a pocket in here. I've got a flip spot in the back. Oh, I was going to put a quote or something in there. Darn it. I got sidetracked. You can see this this pocket is um, there's a pocket here. Whoops. Pocket here and a flip up. So I can put a notepad there or a quote. And then I've got a pocket on the back. So, and then I use some of the linen 
fabric tape and I did this on purpose so that you could see that is the green less than stellar plastic notebook um, but turned into kind of a fun little mini junk journal I could throw this in my purse and again because it's one of those composition books you can get this thing really fat like the ones I showed you at the beginning and it'll just kind of stretch 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 right because it's still got the original spine cover and that was really a fun way to use these these little brads and to kind of make a fun interesting cover with scraps so that was the last piece on bag three bag two okay i might have squealed on that one too bag two had the coolest textiles and i had immediately made plans on what to do with the textiles and then i changed my mind again All right sorry silk is something i love but the really bright, bold colored sari silk, I kind of struggle with this. This was a long strip with different kinds put together. And what I did was I just wove it. I did a super, super simple weave. And this, when I know what size I want, and then I sewed, I wove it, I glued each of the ends down, and then I wove it through. And then I sewed around the edge just to keep it in place. And once I know what size journal I want to use, I'll probably go down and sew this way, cross hatch kind of a thing. But I was able to use that sari silk as a cover. I mean, what a fun, pretty cover that makes. So that was the sari silk from bag two. Now I didn't make the time, whoops, let me get some of this out of the way. I didn't make the time to, um, do one by hand but this DMC floss well DMC floss can be used with ADA cloth or Ada cloth or whatever and make really cool pieces how beautiful would that be on a journal cover this is one that I got at a thrift store a while ago but you can use the string here you can use it other ways too but you can use the string here to turn it into some cross stitched piece or or a crochet not crochet what's the other one needlepoint piece for a cover for your journal all right. Now, I admit I am not a fringe tassel person. Is it pretty? Yes. Do I ever use it? No. Never, ever, ever. It's just not my thing. But she gave me this really cool fringe, and I thought, well, how can I use it? Well, I used it like this. I defringed it, and I sewed two of these pieces, top and bottom. I, I glued it on top of a piece of paper, defringed it, and then I made a trim. So this might be along the top of a pocket it might be on a spine of a journal it might be as a closure for a journal so even something that i wouldn't normally use i was able to use for a closure all right this okay this one she sent me a bunch of of this hemp or twine or whatever you want to call it and i thought okay i am going to use that somehow some way she also sent me this is was notre dame de rems apparently there's more than one notre dame I didn't know that but anyway this is one of the Notre Dame's and I turned this into a visitor's book so there was these individual cards and and I thought well I can make this into a journal cover too right so I took the twine hemp whatever you want to call that and I okay I haven't done this in more than 30 years one year when I was a camp counselor for a summer camp, I was told, you're going to teach the kids macrame. I'm like, uh, I don't know how to do macrame. Um, or gosh, probably maybe even 40 years. But I learned how to do macrame. And okay, you know what? I could have totally made this up. Maybe this isn't even really a real macrame stitch. Maybe I just remembered wrong. But I loved that it kind of tied these pictures together. So I used the pictures from this, the cards, picture cards. And I made a front cover and then it just kind of the architecture and the style, it reminded me of it. So I sewed that down and I used more of the pictures for the back. And on the inside of this journal, I've got, um, you know, all this place to put my own photos or to make this into a junk journal. I was intentional. Why does a junk journal have to open like this? It can open from the top. So I did, I made this one open from the top and I used, yes, even that twine, I made that into a cover. You know, it doesn't have to be the whole thing. It can be an element of it, right? And so there is a note, the way to use, the way I chose to use, to use that piece. All right, uh, Tracy gifted me this. It was a long piece of twisted paper. It looks like newspaper or newsprint, and it's just all twisted. And I thought, how can I use that? I love it. I think it's super duper cool, but how can I use it? So what I did was, 
I took up another piece of black cardstock, right? And I just started cutting them in five inch strips and I laid it out. I used more of that Distress Collage, me collage Medium. This really is good stuff. Not the crazy one, I used the regular one. Really is good glue. Um, just takes a little while to dry. So I used that and I laid it out on my black piece of paper. I had cut the black piece of paper to fit. This is just that notepad that I, you know, showed, uh, it's buried now, but that I shared earlier. It's just a notepad. And I used that notepad, the black cardstock, to make a cover for my notepad. Why can't our notepads be pretty? Oh, they can. So I cut this in about five, six inch strips. I don't remember what it was. I think this is five inches wide. One, two, three, four, five. So I think I cut it at like five and a half so I could overlap a little bit. So I cut these and then I just started laying down the strips, laying them down, laying them down. And when I was done, I went over the whole thing around the edge with my sewing machine and you can see I didn't even seal the top of this I didn't put the collage medium on the top to seal it because I didn't need to I just sewed it down to the edge and then I added some embellishments because I could and I put the black piece of cardstock over the top of this notepad to make myself a notepad cover cover and what, what a fun, I mean, like I said, there's no reason your notepads can't be fun. And this can be a journal. You can tear the pages off if you want to, but you can add to these and make this into your journal. All right. And then the one I was probably most excited about and I probably used the most is this. These are woolen mill ends and they're really low, uh, loosely woven. And they are, the texture on these is all kinds of fabulous. Absolutely love this stuff. But I thought, okay, how can I use that? And that was the first thing I did is I turned these into a book spine. And the way I did that is I took a piece of canvas and I like a medium weight canvas. It doesn't have to be, but I like a medium weight canvas. And then I put my Gorilla Glue stick down. I like this glue stick. I've been pretty happy with most Gorilla Glues. So I put the Gorilla Glue stick down right there on top of my fabric. Well, you can see I used it on fabric or something else. So I put the glue stick down. And then I had ironed this because, but I'm not going to do that now. And then I just took these mill ends and I laid them right next to each other. I think I may have given it a little haircut at the edge first, but maybe not. I don't think I did. And I did that. Okay. And sorry about the loud sound. And I laid it down. And I did the same thing over this whole. If you need a little more, put a little more on there. If you don't get it straight, lift it up. You have, you have wiggle room, you have time. Just put glue down. I mean, it dries quickly, but it doesn't dry super quickly. It gives you the time you need to work with it. So, okay. And this red one was really loose, but I really like it. So I'm gonna keep it. And then I just laid down my next, my next layer. A little bit of overlap laid this down. Try not to bang that. Okay, and then I laid down my next, you know, this one's so loose, I'll probably take it off because I'll add it to something later. And then I did this all the way across, right? Did it all the way across. And then once the glue stick was dry, it was dry enough for me to sew on my sewing machine. I can sew through this no problem once it's dry. And then I just went up and down on my sewing machine and that is what gave me this, which I used for a spine and I'll show you that in a minute. But then I liked it so much and she had given me such a nice amount that I thought, well, why can't that be an entire cover? And that is the book that I have been using. Well, here, you can even see I'm saving even the off cuts because it's such, such a cool thing. I used it to cover my own, you know, keep track of all your stuff, Corey, book. All right, simple, simple journal. I used page inserts from another one. I sewed them in. This is another one of those annoying plastic folders because you can sew right over the top of it. So our no notebooks, this annoying plastic notebook. This is an annoying plastic notebook and so is this. I just sewed right over the top. I used fabric. I think I put cardstock in there to make it a little bit stiffer or not cardstock. Um, chipboard just to make it a little bit stiffer but I use this and then this is just a you know journaling page I use this to make a notebook and it just it's the coolest softest cover now you can see here I just used a really large button because I had one but I could 
well, if I could find it, you know those little clusters that I showed y'all earlier? I could have put, oh, here we go, here they are. I could have used this as a closure, right? I could have used that as a closure. It just makes a great little option. Instead of putting this button, I could put this button and then wrap my string around for my closure, right? Sew this on. Fun closure, pretty cover, usable journal. Same idea with this. I could have done the same type of thing, or I could have just put this on the bottom as an embellishment. So woolen melons that are designed to be tossed were totally repurposed, and I absolutely love this. It's probably my favorite thing that I made. Okay, so that was bag two, all the, the fabric -y bits in the bag with two. Bag one, uh, I'll this over here. bag one, which was what I started with. And I'll show you that in a minute. So inside of it was this clip, this giant clip. And I went all Tim Holtz and I made it kind of grungy and gross. And I used, I don't even know everything I used. There's some grit paste on there. There's definitely some alcohol ink. There's collage medium. There's all kinds of stuff. And then I got the metallic foundry wax and I started playing with that. And is it my favorite thing? No, but it's kind of cool. And I was intentional about playing with it to see. I mean, what a cool closure that would be for the right journal, some kind of a steampunky thing, okay? So that was the clip. Clip, clipboard, the heavy book page. I spilt my pop on it, so it kind of got ruined, so I wasn't able to use that. But um, but um, I think that Tracy, because I saw, you know, when I saw that she put her videos out, I saw the cover, and it looked like she used the heavy book page on hers, so you'll be able to see what that was. And then um, the clipboard. I used some of the pat patina and grit paste on that to make the clipboard. And I know that you've seen them because they've been around for a while. But the clipboard as a journal cover. Okay, so I took the clipboard and I put a book page on it or dictionary page. And then I used napkin, birdie napkin over the top. And then I used the matte medium to close it. And then I did the same thing with another piece. I just got a piece of chipboard and did it as a back. So this is actually going to be a journal cover. So I can put whatever I want on the top of my journal, right? And then the way I'm going to make this into an actual journal is just some heavy canvas. I can, once I've got my pages, so it's much easier to put, sew my pages in prior to putting them into this. Just makes it less cumbersome and bulky, especially when you're talking about the clip. So I've got these two for my front and back covers ready to go. I've got my piece of heavy canvas. I put two layers on it. I would sew in the pages right here. And then once it's ready, I have two choices. I can glue it down right here as an inside closure, right? Glue here and here. I could drill holes with my drill and sew it on. And then I've got, I've got my inside closure like this, right? Okay, and that opens up to my journal. Or I could do it on the outside. And I didn't like that quite as much because it kind of took away from the birdies and the clipboard. But depending on what you want, you have that option. Sew the pages in, put them in the middle, glue it down, sew it down, whichever you prefer. And there is a junk journal out of a clipboard. Plus you have the benefit of being able to clip something on the front of your clipboard. Super fun, easy clip uh, journal. And then this is where I originally went. One of the things she'd gifted me with was that awesome book. And I had got this shortly after I finished my wildflower journal. And so this is one piece of the book cover that she gave me. That is my cover front and back. Okay. I cut that down and Tracy's initials are TF. So I thought, ah, oh, what can I do? So take flight. And she also recently released a bird kit that's really cool. So she gifted me that bird book and she released a bird kit and I'm like, okay, well that's a sign. And so I used this as a bird theme. You can see here the way I bound this book together is with those mill ends that I had in, that I had intended to use. And then because this cover I had pre-cut, it was a little bit smaller than the bird book pages that I needed. So what I did was I used file folder to extend my cover. Okay. No waste and I don't have to start from scratch. I just, I still was able to get two covers out of it. I just extended it by using that file folder. And now Corey, your journal's 
really anemic looking. Yeah, well, this is me. It's going to be full and it's going to be fat when I'm done. And then I used one of the Tim Holtz knob closures and just a hair elastic to make my closure. And then I used file folders for the pages. And I haven't decorated these yet because like I said, life happened. But I've got the bird pages in between. And with the wildflower, I did one. With the birds, I did two. So all my bird pages are in between the variety of different... Um, file folder pages that I did. And this will be definitely chunky by the time that I'm done embellishing these pages. But it was a super, super fun project and I'm looking forward to finishing this up. And that is how I used the woolen ends, the book, pay, the, um, book covers, uh, some of the embellishments that she had gifted me, the books that she gifted me, and started to turn it into a journal. All right, this is getting way, way longer than I ever intended. Oh, and these are some of the bits that I had collected for building the insides of the pages. You know, a little dandelion make a wish thing and a little birdie pocket. So I'm gonna use Tracy's, a lot of Tracy's digital bird kits to finish this up, just to tie in the whole bird theme throughout. All right, I hope that gave you some ideas headed you in a different direction. Giveaway, I am going to I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to give away something. I don't know when, honestly, because life is really busy right now. I've got some health issues I have to take care of. I've got some things with school that I'm working on. I don't know that I'm going to finish this in a really timely manner, but some of the other stuff that I've got, maybe that clipboard or maybe one of the other journals or a couple of the other journals, I'll do what Tracy did and do a random giveaway. I mean, come on, who doesn't want a really cool paper or paper clip journal, right? So I will, I will do whatever Tracy, I haven't seen what she put. So I will do whatever Tracy decides and I will honor that and I will give away one, two, three. I'll give away stuff. I will give away stuff. I will make it, make it worth your while. Um, we, Tracy and I had talked and we had agreed, you know, everybody's in a different spot right now. Do what you can, pay it forward some way, whether it's gifting to another person or helping somebody out at the, the store when you see that they're a bit short or donating to a cause just just pay it forward. Tracy, you're a doll. I love you. I love the treasures you gifted me with. Floof and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for watching and please, if you take nothing else away from this, encourage yourself to try different things. Think outside your box. Um, find a crafting friend and swap with them because it really it challenges you to think in a creative manner. And thank you to Gail and Carrie for inspiring me to do this with some fabulous people. All right, take care all and happy creating.